So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, back again. We're going to cut these tendons on this queen post we started last night. Try to get another one cut tonight. Nothing new and exciting, but tell you one thing that I have gotten religious about is every time one of these saws comes out of that toolbox, I check that blade for square. Now, when you're checking your blade, obviously you're checking against the, uh, the not the fence, help me out here, the deck of the saw. Don't rest your square up against that tooth and square up to the actual carbide tooth. Go in between the teeth. That's going to tell you if your saw, if the blade itself is square or not. And that's good and square. And, and no, I don't do that with the saw plugged in. I'd hate to hit that trigger and uh, make a mess of my social life. But anyway, we're going to try to knock these tenons out. Now some of you are probably going to say, well, why the hell don't you just put it on the sawmill and cut it? This is only a 5 inch long tenon on an 8 by 8 post. It's not going to take me very long to cut this out. Now there's a couple ways you could do it. I could drop cut the line on that or I can kerf it. I prefer to kerf it in case I... There's times I drop cut. You guys have seen me drop cut before, but... I kind of like doing it this way. I could pare down real easy and, you know, keep an eye on things really well. That saw wanders one way or the other on me, I might screw my tendon up pretty good. So I prefer just to kerf it. And I probably do a lot more kerfs than what I need to do, but uh, it just makes it easier for me to remove the material. So let's get after it. Now that we've got the hard way down, let me show you the easier way. Seems we do that a lot here, don't we? I do a lot of that because a lot of you guys may not have the tools that I have. You know, it doesn't hurt to show you guys that you can do it without a bunch of fancy tools. So we kind of like to mix it up a little bit. Now, now I'm going to drop cut this one when we get to that point because this is only a three inch wide tenon so it'll be nothing to drop cut that so we're going to get at it.
Yeah, let's see what we get. Plug her back in. <coughs> I got a shadow here, guys. This one I think will roll it over. Do it on the other side. The reason I'm going to do that is I want this saw to have a good place to rest. If I don't have a good place for that saw to rest, my cut's going to get off and then this tenon's going to be out of square and I don't feel like screwing around with it. This saw uh, does not seem to like to cut in that orientation, but it'll work. I'm going to finish this off with the uh, other saw. Clean up. Seems I spend half my night looking around me. Where'd my tools go? Where'd they go? Little checker with a square. See how to whack we are. Pretty good. Live with it. Pretty good.
like it. Love it. Again, make sure you chamfer your edges. Makes it a lot easier to line up that mortise with the uh, tenon when you go to put it in. There's just something very satisfying about peeling that edge off of there. Probably you guys who watch and do this every day are like, yeah, what's so great is just a tenon. You guys probably get sick of doing that, I would imagine, but you know, I'm new enough at it where I do not get tired of it one damn bit. So there we have it, guys. We have a finished queen post. So, total time on this guy. A little pan here. Total time on this guy is about two hours. So that's it. Not too bad. Well, maybe two and a half hours. We're not counting the milling time, though. Obviously, the milling time adds a couple hours to it. So we're going to keep going. Well guys, we got to cut it short tonight. Got some weather moving in. It's supposed to downpour tonight and a uh, good portion of the day tomorrow, but tomorrow evening is supposed to be nice so we can keep going on these queen posts. Slow progress, but some progress is better than no progress. Eight more of these guys to go after this one's done. We're going to be in pretty good shape and then we can cut purlin plates. We can finish cutting our top plates. I did find another source of timber. It looks like it is free of charge and it's uh, much, much closer to home, about five miles away. So this weekend they, we may be taking a trip with a camera over to check those woods out. So hope you guys are enjoying this series. Um, we're going to keep going on it. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.